All right, so let's get you caught up on what happened today. First of all, a little bit of news. As of right now, opening day is scheduled for April 7th. This from Bob Nightingale. Spring training game scheduled to start uh, around March 18th, the 20th. And again, all this is developing as we're in the air. Uh, Joel Sherman reporting. Owners must ratify for there to be a final agreement. You mentioned that 23 of 30. When that occurs, perhaps as early as today, transactions such as trades and free agency can begin immediately. Players can begin going to spring training as early as tomorrow. So that is where we are. Baseball is back. Opening day will be sometime around April 5th, 6th or 7th. Pick a day. And uh, players will be going into their spring training facilities tomorrow once the CBA has been voted on by owners. Technically, that means the lockout has been lifted. John Heyman, uh, think about these numbers for a minute. John Heyman just tweeting out that the players' vote was 26 to 12 in favor of coming back. So let's, let's explain a little bit of the drama here, and we'll have, we'll have plenty of time to talk about what this means for the Jays, but... But let's explain a little bit of, of, of the drama we saw today. Uh, Major League Baseball submitted a proposal to the Major League Baseball Players Association earlier today, gave them a 3 p.m. deadline to come to an agreement on it. The sides managed to negotiate this morning an agreement on the international draft, which had been a stumbling block last night. They basically punted that. They removed it, and they said, we will deal with it. We'll give ourselves a deadline in July. If nothing happens by then, status quo remains in place. They, they basically remove that impediment from the negotiations. So everybody assumed when we came into the office today that it was just simply a matter of that this was definitely going to get done. Remember how we told you that five of eight players on the executive council of Major League Baseball were Scott Boris clients? Yep. Well, we don't know the breakdown yet, but here is what happened. Very early in the voting process, John Heyman, who John Heyman is is basically Scott Boris's mouthpiece, and and I mean that in a positive way. I would be if Scott oh, Boris absolutely. wanted if Scott Boris. I mean, I'll tell you, I'll put my hand up right now. If Scott Boris wants me to be his mouthpiece, I'll be his mouthpiece. Believe me, John Heyman. I don't know if he was in the room, but John Heyman started reporting that there was a lot of opposition on the executive council to this agreement. Now, we don't know what a lot of opposition means, but the way things are set out, this is how the vote happens. Every team has a player rep. In the case of the Blue Jays, it's Ross Stripling. So you've got 30 player reps, one from each team. You've got eight members of the executive council, and they can be, it doesn't matter what team they're from. Uh, the eight members were Paxton, Lindor, Jason Castro, Garrett Cole, uh, who am I missing, Barker? Scherzer, um, BB, Zach Britton. God, I'm going to come up one short, and that's just going to frustrate the hell out of me because I came up one short. Anyhow, there was eight of them. So for this to pass, 20, what did we say, 28? 20 of 38. There you go, yep. 20 of 38 team reps and executive council members had to vote in favor of it. So a simple majority. They got 26 out of those votes. That means 12 votes, which means even if, just for argument's sake, let's, let's assume that everybody in the executive council voted against it, which we don't, we don't know, but no. let's assume we did. That means four other teams voted against it. Yeah. So good news for fans, for all of us. Baseball's back. But, Kevin, let's see how the Major League Baseball Players Association spins this. Because we've talked about this all along from the very beginning, going back into the 70s. Players have always been concerned that ownership would try to split the union. And we saw in these negotiations the whole thing with the international draft, obviously targeted at the Latino players. And there are some Latino players who, who think it's a good thing, some Latino players who think it's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you. Because you've been in, we talked about this, you've been in clubhouses I have. where the player rep gets up and says, guys, we got to talk about stuff. Did you think you'd see the day where you'd get 12 teams, no. 12 teams slash players voting against a CBA? I have to be honest with you, the first time I saw the tweet from Heyman, I thought he was kidding. 
Now, I know this is not a time to be kidding, but when, when you're as... The, or the, the, or the, was hacked. Well, you're well, I, That's funny. <laughs> yeah, it, you never know. It, it, well, it's just, it's funny that to be the strongest union in sports, which is what we all thought that baseball was, and every time I was in one of those meetings, the first thing out of the player rep's mouth was, whatever's said here, we have to stick together. That was the main poking at everybody was, whatever you think, we have to always stick together. We're strongest as a unit. Does it seem like they are now? Again, we will need to see. Um, we'll need to see what happens. We'll need to see how this is how this is announced. Will there be a joint announcement? In the past, the Players Association and ownership they've put out a joint announcement that today we've agreed. Blah blah blah. Will we see that here? I I, I don't know, but you think we'll we'll ever know the teams that voted no? Yes, that'll you, come you out. Do we think oh, we will. Oh, that'll come out eventually. Oh hell yeah! You think there'll be a statement from those teams? This thing's as leaky as the Titanic. It'll come out. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll know. We'll know. I would imagine pronto. Which it will be interesting to see it. how the other players that voted yes, because obviously they want to play baseball, and that it may have something to do with the seventy percent of people who aren't making more than a million dollars. And we mentioned that the start mm -hmm. of this thing was how is that going to determine the outcome of the whole, this whole thing? There'll be a time where some families, some wives, some kids stand up and go, "Hey, daddy, can you stop listening to Scherzer? We need to go make some money, right?" And this may be one of those times where. That 70% is raising their hand and say it's time. You know, everything that we were asking for has went basically up. It didn't go down. Mm. So take the deal. That's the one thing we, we need to look forward to here. That The deal is done. We're going right. to have baseball, and I can't wait. Let's, let's walk through a bit of the deals, uh, the deal as we understand it that matters to fans. We can deal with the internal politicking down the road. Um, baseball's back. You are, you are going we assume we will see some free agents signing as early as tonight. Keep in mind that teams have not been allowed to talk to players or agents. They've not been allowed to have any conversation with their players about anything. I presume they've all gone along with that, although I don't know. I suppose there's nothing preventing somebody from picking up the phone and talking to an agent about how his wife is doing. And, oh, by the way, you know, we've got an extra yeah. $212, $212 million I, hanging around here if that shortstop still how, how about Rob sitting around going, okay, you want to do that? I, I've been lambasted the last couple of months. Right. I wouldn't mind, you know, finding you $250,000 for doing yeah, that. Yeah, but, but, but the point is teams have been able to talk to other teams about trades. So there is a chance that you might see uh, some trades out of the gate. Again, players are expected to report tomorrow. So the game will be open for business as soon as the owners ratify. Uh, Joel Sherman, just giving you some numbers if you're wondering. There are 300 free agents roughly still, still looking for work. There's 150-plus arbitration cases. I don't know if we're going to have a Rule 5 draft or not. Um, all rehab players obviously will need to be updated by their teams. They haven't had access to the training facilities. Foreign players are going to get need visas to get into the country. So you're going to see players coming back in bits and, you know, dribs and drabs over the next, I would say, probably the next week or so. It is going to be a madhouse. We also know that, uh, or we believed, according to the last offer, that, there, that the playoffs will expand. There will be 12 teams in the playoffs. I'm happy with that. I think 14 is a little much. But if it's 12, that represents a win for the players because ownership wanted 14 playoff teams. And you got to remember that every CBA, even though this one is in effect for five years, every CBA is negotiated, Kevin, with an eye towards the next CBA. So if you're the mm -hmm. players... See, we're, we'll get into who won and lost here eventually. I think the players did really well here. They too. got more money in the minimum. They've got ownership to agree to the pre-arbitration pool, which we hadn't seen before. It looks like they're going to do away with the qualifying offer. Uh, the international draft has been tabled, so that didn't split the union. We'll have to see where the CBT number comes out. But the other thing the Players Association has done is not, now they know that ownership wants 14 teams in the playoffs. Yeah. They didn't get it. They gave him 12. So the next time the CBA comes along, you've got that, you've got that carrot there for the owners. You got, hey, you wanted 14 teams. Well, 
maybe we'll give you those two extra playoff teams in return for X. Well, you can see why the, the owners would want 14 teams with more money in their pocket. But it's a little watered down. You could have a chance of having a couple of losing teams in the playoffs. Do you really want that? Like, it's okay to maybe have one, which is probably what you'll have out of the six teams in each, each league. But do you really want two? And you would have a chance of doing that if it's 14 teams. I'm okay with 12. I think it causes chaos. Now, that's what you want, right? You know, you have the best records in, in both leagues. We'll get a bye the first round. I think that's what they're going to do. I like it. Bob Nightingale, it is a full season, so there will be 162 games full pay. The season will be extended three days with double headers to make up for April 7th opening day. Yeah. So there you go. That That's, Se- seven that's game where we are headers? right now. Se- seven inning double headers? I believe nine innings. Really? I believe, I, I believe nine inning double headers. Wow. Yeah. I, I have not seen... And again, folks, uh, this is just breaking. It's Blair and Barker on Sportsnet 590. The fan, Major League Baseball players voted 26 to 12 to accept the new CBA. Baseball is back. Opening day is around April 7th. And as I said, uh, th- this news is continuing continuing to break as we, as we talk. So I'm 